Well, Davis has racked up a legion of online followers and plenty of breathless newspaper coverage by sharing her incendiary views on modern feminism. So she tapped into genuine female pushback to the excesses of wokery, or is she just an attention seeker? We'll find out in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the clip that sent her viral. Welcome back to that liminal period. It's your girl, Chun Li Shoddy, with so many dating shows and shows focused on finding love and hopefully leading to marriage. I think it's pretty ironic that there is actually an undertone in today's society on anti marriage. I think that there are those on the left and progressives and feminists who are blurring the lines between what even is a woman while in the same breath talk about the gender inequalities and pay gap. And some have even turned to the B4 movement. And then on the right side, you have the red pill movement who you have people like Pearl Davis, who's preaching that men shouldn't get married because they have everything to lose and all women are shit. What's the ultimate goal here? I think that today's conversation is going to be very important because there are so many misguided young men and young women. And today I want to put a spotlight on the red pill movement. If mass amount of men and women decide that they are not going to be getting married anymore or not having children anymore, then society is doomed. Our cultures and our morals have already been deteriorating and if we have more young men and young women subscribe to the red pill movement or the feminist movement, then that does sure fire away to end society. I want to share a clip from the Pierce Morgan show where he had Pearl Davis on to debate a feminist on a woman's role in society. And Pearl Davis even mentioned that she doesn't think that women should vote. But let's get into it. When I said Sir Pearl Davis has racked up a legion of online followers and plenty of breathless newspaper coverage by sharing her incendiary views on modern feminism. The New York Post called her the female Andrew Tate. So she tapped into genuine female pushback to the excesses of wokery, or is she just an attention seeker? That's giving her too much credit. First, let's take a look at the clip that sent her viral. A lot of people think I'm insane because I don't think women should vote. Everybody thinks I'm crazy for this opinion. If anything, this is probably my most extreme opinion. 90% of women have been on birth control. One out of three women has had an abortion. One out of three women has an STD. Uh, average body count is over five, so that your average wife has slept with over five people. But what's the 95% correlation? 95% of women are not virgins on their wedding days. So I understand the complaint. Okay, well, Paul joined but i don't understand the correlation and maybe she'll do that for us maybe you should explain to me why whores can't vote but according to her all women are whores so yeah we shouldn't be able to vote because of that uh joins me now alongside political journalist ava santini was nodding furiously along there to everything she heard <laughs> uh, right paul you become we would be called the female andrew tate how do you plead well i, I take it as a toxic. compliment you know i'm a fan of andrew tate of everything he says um, it depends what we're talking about. But overall, I think he's got a good message. I think he's good for young men. OK, look, you're talking about women predominantly, uh, which is why you've got this big following. And your view is that modern feminism is deeply flawed. I would argue a lot of your proposals, like taking the vote away from women, <laughs> are deeply regressive. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to remove, just from yourself, the right to vote? Because well, um, what happened was I, I had the same view, right? Um, back when I started, I was like, why? I found out that only 5% of women wanted the right to vote. And I that, couldn't figure out... Wait, hold on. Less than 5% of women wanted the right to vote before women's suffrage. Okay, so she's talking about, like, back in, like, the 1800, early 1900s. Like, she's not talking about 2024. So I don't understand why that's even relevant, but okay. Like... Why would women not? No, it's true. It's well, true. At, you the look it up. at the time. At the time. Because they've been conditioned by men to think that they shouldn't have a vote. I, I mean, that's what they say. But, you know, I started reading their writings, right? And what I found out was that the reason a lot of women advocated for it was because they believed it was the beginning of the breakdown of the family. You know, before you became one in marriage, 85% of people were married. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but they were right. What has happened 100 years later? Well, what's that going to do of, with them having the vote? Well, it also goes back to responsibility. Um, again, men are 80 to 90% of the military. They run all of the infrastructures that make society run. So I just think if we want- Yes and no. Yes. Men 
run a lot of the STEM fields and men do come up with a lot of the inventions. Like men are very important to a thriving society. That's a fact. Men are important to the protection of a society. That is also a fact. But women also bring value to us as a society. Women are the first teachers of children. Women are the ones who tend to be at home raising and nurturing these children. Women literally build the community. So both men and women have value and you cannot just compare it on a apples to apple comparison. You can't. Even then, not all men go into the military. So should only men that go into the military have a right to say something? And not all roles within the military are even equal. But I guess it's just a gender thing for Pearl. And that's a part of the toxicity. They don't understand the nuances in conversation. And so anyways, because women aren't in the military, we shouldn't vote an equal say in society, then be equal. Do 50% of the hard jobs. Be 50% of the military. In the US, um, they're fined $250,000 if they are not, they don't join um, selective service, which is essentially the draft. Okay, but on, on so, specifically on the vote, that's a fact. what would having the right to vote have to do with family cohesion, for example? Well, because again, before you weren't trying to divide a family. It was one family unit. You had one vote for the family. I mean, I, I don't think it's good for a family to have two votes. Ava, your mouth seems to have dropped about no, do you know three feet. Like, I know, I know. No, it's just sort of a bit galaxy brain. I feel like, you know, the, the, the stats that you're putting down are perhaps correct in some universe. Which, which stats? They just kind of don't really They're happen. correct, but they're outdated. It's correct, but outdated. Less than 5% of women originally wanted to vote. Okay, fact. That's it. Outdated, but fact. Up. I mean, just just to take you back to the mm -hmm. to, to the women's writings that you've allegedly read. I mean, at allegedly. The time, allegedly. Well, what do you mean allegedly? At the time that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, women weren't really allowed to write. They weren't allowed to go to school. Yes, they were. Write. Yes, they so, were. That, that's actually, incorrect. The first okay, female well, property. The first about. female property owner was in the 1600s. The idea that women couldn't work and couldn't. I'm so sorry, that's, but that's, that the first be female. Property. No, the first. No, no. The first female. The first female millionaire was in the uh, late 1800s. And what's that? Was that so, inherited? So, it, no, it wasn't. It was self-made. She was. She, no, yes, it was. It was self-made. Yes, it was. And she never she inherited was just, land. Yes, it, she did not inherit it. what law permitted that? What? What law permitted that? Well, there was no law. I mean, there's always been okay, women anyway. that were influential let, let, let's in let's history. Get on to, let's get on to the vote. So what I don't understand... Okay, just pause because they're both being so disingenuous. Yes, women have been influential in society in the capacity that we were able to be because at one point in time, we were second-class citizens. That... That's true. So, no, we're not going to talk about it as if it's just like women have always had the same rights and have had the same privileges as men. Did they always have opportunities? Yes, there have always been those exceptions. There have always been people that have been able to find their way to success. However, there are limitations to an extent, especially in our past. But they were talking about Madam C.J. Walker. Like, it's May, guys. And I'm low key annoyed that neither one of them knew who the first female millionaire was because Black History Month was just a couple months ago. So, and there's also a really great show on Netflix. Like, you guys should know this. It's actually a really cool story. But anyways, no, Ava, it was not an inheritance. You know, a part of your message, I've just, you know, I've researched you today. I, and hang on a minute. Okay. You know, your, your big push is that you care about men and you don't think that men are getting enough of a say. But well, I thanks care about to, women hang on, too. I haven't care made the point too. yet. Okay. Um, because of feminism, okay? What I wonder is when you start making calls out like repeal the 19th, women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. How is that helping young men? Because these young men have women in their lives. They have mothers, they have sisters, they have teachers. And they turn around, they don't know how to act around women because you're giving them license to be misogynistic. I, I wouldn't call it misogynistic. I say be equal. So again, I men do all of that. Well, saying. then, okay, I'd love for the feminists, please apply for the oil rigs. Please go do the hard jobs in society. What They're open. They're work, hiring though? because I don't equate for, I, I don't think men or women are equal until we do the right. equal work. So no, no, listen, listen, go, go apply to be on the oil rigs. Go do, go be a plumber, go be electrician, go be on the front lines of the military. And then we should have equal rights. But until feminists are willing to do that, 
I don't believe we should have the freedom without the responsibility. Okay, well, I don't think that I'm physically built for that. You might be, but I'm absolutely that, not. You, no, but you, wow. you said you were wow. a volleyball player. Wow. You said you were a volleyball player, and so you've got more strength than I do. I don't think but that I, don't I have can more do strength, those strokes. I don't have more strength than the average man. I'm not going to take your man. right away to I don't do have, it. Uh, I don't have more strength than the average man, but my... Again, it goes back to go be a plumber. You want to be equal, go be That's equal. Also, you, also, you also, but you don't want, you want to. Pearl Davis isn't in any of those occupation. So it's ironic that she is telling women that we should go into those fields because, okay, here's the thing, okay? Like there are certain fields that men are better at as well as they're more interested in. I'm not saying all men want to be plumbers, but men and young boys are innately more into things and, and into understanding how things work. So whether that means being a plumber, being a construction worker, being a welder, men are more into the trades as compared to women. Like I said, we offer different value. And honestly, would you want to have a military full of women on the front line. Think about it. Would you even want a woman in these positions? And I'm not just talking about for her safety, for her not to be on the front line. Like I'm talking about for your own personal safety. When a fire happens, what do we call? We, far, we call firefighters. Are we going to have the same reaction? Are we going to feel as safe? Like, and be honest with yourself. If you had a four foot 10 or a five foot four woman coming to save you from a burning building or would you rather it be a five foot ten man when there's a crime happening and you call the police would you rather a five foot ten six foot heavy set guy come and help and save you or would you rather it be a five foot five heavy set woman helping to save you like just think about it like just instinctively who do you want and I mentioned it in the past, like there are certain fields that women are more inclined to join. And also as a, as a society, we also rather hire women for these roles and positions like a nanny, like a babysitter, a lot of caretakers, nurses. We rather it be from a woman. Why is that? Pearl, are you telling me that you would feel just as safe with a man being your manny to your children? No. So no, don't expect women and men to always deliver the exact same thing. Like, why can't we understand that we are different? We're different, but we're equal as far as being humans and as far as being able and having the opportunity to deliver value because it's multifaceted once again. Like you keep talking about things like it's just black or white, like it's just men or women. And also while we're at it, if that's the case, Pearl, like, no, you shouldn't be able to vote, but I should. I still think I should be able to vote even according to what you said. Go take on masculine roles. Well, I already told you guys I used to be in commercial sales. And if you guys aren't aware, but commercial sales or corporate sales tend to be a male dominated industry. OK, I studied nursing, which was a female dominated industry, realized there was no money and there was no passion coming from me and there was no interest. So I switch. OK, I studied marketing ended up working in sales. And then what industry did I go into? MRO. Do you guys know what that is? Maintenance, repair, and operation. For over five years, I was consulting and selling to companies and selling to plant managers, engineers, welders, plumbers, HVAC guys, mechanics, all sorts of blue collar tradesmen. Okay. And I also worked in a corporate setting. So yeah, I worked with a lot of men and I feel like I did a lot of heavy lifting. Not only that, but I mentioned to you guys that my mom moved up to South Georgia when I was in middle school and high school. She still currently lives down there. And what are we? And what does my family do in South Georgia? What is the family business? Well, we're farmers. So yeah, Pearl, I get to vote. You don't get to vote. Shut up. Stop your show now. Point blank. Give me your subscribers. Because <laughs> you're toxic, bro. Again, it goes back to go be a plumber. You want to be equal, go be you equal. Also, you, also, you also, but you don't want, you want divorce to be made illegal. Yes. Why? Yes, because I don't think what we have today is really marriage. What is marriage? It's for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health till death do us part. That's what marriage is supposed to be. But feminists have ruined marriage for the people that actually believe in marriage. How? When there's a 50% divorce rate 
And the average marriage is Why is that all down to years. the women, though? I, I, I didn't say that it was all down to the women. So why but feminist what I, what I, you, you asked why I want divorce to be banned. Yeah. Can I finish yeah. that first? So I'm saying, you know, the people that believe in divorce, go be in long-term relationships. Leave marriage for the people that actually believe in, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. But doesn't the sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin? So you wouldn't be able to get married. I, what do you what do you mean? Well, you've spoken quite openly There's... about how you're not a virgin. Why don't you go back to your home on Whore Island? And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I then, think, you know... You know I, and I, would, I just think that and... you're upholding standards that you don't actually I, I, live I, by. You know, and that's a, fair, that's a fair complaint. I wish I was. But, you know, we can't go back. I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, but I just don't think it's 80... fair that you get to be here and you get to be paid for your views and you're uh -huh. telling other women that they shouldn't be allowed to. I, I... So it's because she's a clout-chasing, pick-me hypocrite. And I hate to put it that harshly, but that's the way that Pearl would have stated it to her guests or to other people that she's on debate panels with. I don't understand why people are taking dating or relationship or marriage advice from people who are actively not living the lifestyle that is going to lead to a successful marriage. And people who aren't married, people who aren't in successful long-term relationships either. Take a look at Fresh and Fit. They preach that a nuclear family is a bedrock to society. However, look as we are unpacking and watching in real time the story of Walter Weeks and Daisy Chen from the Fresh and Fit podcast. You are seeing an alleged pregnancy that is going to lead to a public abortion. Why do people in the red pill space preach all of these messaging that they themselves do not uphold? Like she said, like Ava said. You say all these things, Pearl. You preach what a man wants, Pearl. You say that men want friendly, fit, feminine women. And you're none of those things. Yes, you're a volleyball player, but I don't know. Like, I wouldn't necessarily put her in the fit category. I mean, I guess she's not obese. I guess she's healthy from appearance. But I mean, she's not friendly, clearly. And she's very not feminine, cutting into what Pierce has to say and what Ava has to say constantly. So she herself lack all of the characteristics that a high value man would want. And she's said in the past that she rates herself as a five. And that was years ago. So you're currently a couple years older. You're still unmarried. You're still single. Your past relationships indicate that you can't attract high value men, that you do attract baby daddies, that you do attract financially unstable men. So why are we taking any type of advice from you? Maybe you shouldn't vote based on your past decisions and also based on your lack of effort and value that you del that you deliver to society. If I, if I may, <laughs> at some stage jump in. Um, isn't the whole point of being a feminist, though, that women are entitled to have their own views? Absolutely. And so I... she's perfectly entitled to her views. Yeah, but you can't... You might not like but them. But I'm here to challenge Isn't she them? exercising her right as a... Are you a feminist? No, I am not. Really? <laughs> no, you know, I wouldn't. Don't go that far. You don't want to be a feminist? Uh, no, because I think if feminists really believed in equality, but you guys don't, I would love for you, there is an oil rig hiring. <laughs> there is an engineer. I would actually love hiring. to see Ava Santino on a No, seriously, rig. seriously. Uh, there is a, a building being built next to my building. Go do it, feminists. But, Go but, do it. And me, but, I'm saying the same job that I'm get, doing right when now. When you find the man you want to get married to, are you saying you will literally, you will be with that man whatever happens for the rest of your life. Yes, for, for the vows that we're supposed to live but How by. do you know you can keep them? I, I mean, look it, I think it's a choice. And that's the thing, like women are so willing to leave marriages because they're not happy. This is not about happiness. The most important thing is the children. And the problem is we have a modern society where it's me, 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 my feelings, leave when I feel like it, instead of doing what's best for the kids. Ava, I gotta say, it's a little bit listening to Andrew Tate, where some of it I really don't agree with. I don't agree with the vote stuff. When I hear things like that, I think there'll be a lot of people, especially older generation women, perhaps, who think, you know what, she's got a point. Well, I mean, I believe in agency. So I think that if a woman is going to look after her children in divorce, that's absolutely fine. I also believe in your right to speak your mind about it. What I don't understand... I'd, I'd like to what say, I don't even understand. before the 1920s, you know I mean? women could speak openly. This idea that, like, women couldn't talk the last 500 years. There have been women throughout the history... I know, the American state education been, system has failed been, has, before. Has, it's been, failing has been, There have been women throughout history that have read, written, and been 
very influential in society. Okay. So this idea like women could never do it. Do you don't know what, I, what I don't understand though is when it gets spiteful, okay? Because you put down a few arguments that I think are perfectly, like, you know, they're kind of evangelical and they're Christian, but those are your right to say it. What I don't understand is when it kind of seeps into this sort of, you call women fat, you say that they shouldn't have abortions. Are they fat? You say that they, they have STDs. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, the question is, see, I told you, she's yes just as hard. I, so I have average to. American Actually. woman is 170 pounds. That's a, pounds. That's objectively overweight. I mean, let's be honest. We <laughs> Now, we now celebrate morbid obesity but, as, as some kind of body positive thing, and it is complete nonsense. So, actually, on that point again, there's a bit of truth in and this that. Is the problem. This is the problem. See, the problem is that the pendulum is swinging too far left and too far right constantly, and the nuclear family should not be used as a political talking point. It is an essential part of a thriving society. And that's the real danger of the rhetoric that the feminist movement have to say, as well as those a part of the red pill movement. It's just too far extreme. And that's the problem. All road leads to Rome. Both ideologies lead to a unfulfilled life with no memories, no family, no children, no friends, no one around you with all of your consumer goods and all the body counts that you have that's it is that the kind of life that you want to live i mean i guess that's your decision to make any party that preaches anti-family is not a party looking out for your best interests how have we come to celebrate morbid obesity as body positive well, it's watched, nonsense we're not talking about morbid obesity. i was actually watching your podcast earlier and you sp you spoke to someone who was I, I would say probably a size 12 and you called her it fat a beast and a divorcee she was fat obese and a divorcee i mean like i don't know what to say this is the thing women we don't want to live in reality we don't want to say things that are true was she fat yes was she a divorcee yes these things are just objective Facts. Okay, I'm going to have to and, objectively... And she insulted me first. They always... I'm going to have to objectively end the debate, but it was an interesting conversation. I think we should get you two back together. I As a yeah, the conversation is just too far extreme, and both sides are just preaching anti-family. If you guys are actually going to hold each other up or hold to society up to either ideologies, it's going to lead to declining birth rates, which it already is, declining marriage rates, which it already is, a weaker mindset it is not only are we weaker physically as a nation but also academically second clip i'm going to share is going to be from the daily wire where they're going to be discussing some of the dangers of the anti-marriage rhetoric that we hear from both sides month right to oppose marriage now uh it's it's run by the ostensible red pill crowd which you know it's interesting how the meaning of red pill has evolved over the last uh, five years to, to essentially now mean Anti, I would say anti-woman. They would say pro-man, but I think it's far beyond pro-man. I think it's decidedly anti-woman in many ways. And you see people who, I think some of them are, are bad actors who are peddling it. But then you also see people like, like Pearly Things who, I don't know Pearl. I don't know if she's a bad actor or not. I kind of get the sense that maybe she's just a naive uh, person being kind of dragged along out of half desire to be famous and half probably hasn't. I, really I didn't know the marriage thing. Uh, Clout chasing. Yeah. She might be dumb for real. She might be willfully ignorant, but she definitely clout chasing. Very so, pro so marriage. Pearl, Pearl made that argument. Yes. She okay. Made the argument men literally men should, should not, not get, get married. married. Okay. Because the institution. But are men listening to that? Like, are men saying that men shouldn't get married, or is that a woman saying that a man should get married? Unfortunately, some Pearl, are. It, I think that there are examples of men saying it as well, but I think Pearl is sort of a, a prominent one of the prominent voices. A lot of the. But people she's I hear not married. Reading, no, no, no. Yeah. Please. Okay. So then that, that, I think that's first, that's, that's a huge thing, right? I mean, obviously it's like listening to people that don't have kids tell you why you shouldn't have kids. Like it <laughs> doesn't really work. Right. Cause when you're telling them about what changes inside of you when you get married. And I think it's very easy to gravitate towards that. That is a feminist message not to get married. And if her argument is, if you're that's what I, said, courts, it I could agree with you. Like, you know, the courts have done tons of things that are awful cool. that I disagree. Well, I, I don't even agree necessarily with the courts taking marriage at all. And it was a church thing and they took it. And this is how we ended up with, with gay marriage rights, which I'm very much opposed to. Well, I would say um, that a big part of the red pill thing that we would all probably agree with is they diagnose actual problems. So right. when Pearl or, or other people in the movement come along and say, this is a major problem in society, right. I almost always agree with them. Yeah. It's when they get to the prescription that I think that, the, that it That's falls right. apart. The prescription being, you know, lashing out at women generally or, or well, embracing the, despair or not, yeah, uh, kind no, of nihilism. That's a feminist message. I mean, the, you, the that, that is a, a fundamentally to be anti-family. I don't understand how you could identify as a conservative at all yeah. because everything that the left is trying to do, every Marxist principle, every feminist principle is about disrupting 
you know, the family unit. It, it's what connects everything from the climate change lobby to don't, you know, don't have kids, the planet's going to die, to yep. feminism, you know, be like men, we should be like men. It's all a disruption of the family unit. And if you, if you are now arguing in favor of something that's fundamentally Marxist, then you have to examine whether or not you're conservative at all. That would, would be what my point to... back on. Like I said, sometimes when we think that we're being so far progressive or we're so advanced in our thinking that we're really just regressing. Everything that the red pill is doing, like I said, is in retaliation of the feminist movement. And they've gone so far to the point where now they are spreading misandry. Like, to me, like, that's wild. I used to think that the red pill actually understood how society operated and the fact that men and women are not equal. And that's why they believe in the some of the double standards. But the more that I start to look into people within the red pill space, the people that are actually claiming it, I'm like, actually, they're just as bonkers. Like, they're actually kind of extreme. <laughs> Like people like Pearl, kind of bonkers, like kind of weird. With the red pill, you know, and, and I've and I've been in many uh, uh, altercations with with the red. I've run afoul of the red pill crowd many times, talking about these issues. And the question I've always had for them that they've never answered, and I'd love to hear an answer from any of them, is that you know, because I agree with ninety five percent of their criticisms, uh, uh, as you point out, the family courts and it's how it's stacked against men and so on and so forth. What's the other option? Like, okay, we agree with all that. So then men should just be alone and, and give up on their, on their bloodline and die and their bloodline is extinguished? Like, it, it, what you are suggesting is despair. You, you are telling men, men are already feeling despair. They're feeling meaninglessness. They're feeling mm -hmm. lost. They're feeling alone. Uh, they're feeling like everything's stacked against them. And so your answer to them is, yeah, well, just that, that's the, be, be in despair and then die. And, and that's what I was saying. The red pill and the feminist movement are not helping men and women come together. They're not actually trying to unite us or trying to find some similarities. Like, you have to understand that America is a very young nation and we are one of the more progressive nations, okay? Like, we're still figuring a lot of this out. A lot of issues are still being ironed out. However, we're not allowed to have these conversations because a lot of people don't even have a foundational understanding of what is a man what is a woman what are the biological differences i think that there's a lot of room for conversation for us to iron out all of these issues that we have in america however i think that we really need to start picking up the pace because the deterioration is actually happening quicker than the building it's almost like you're stuck in credit card debt every single time you're making that minimum monthly payment by the time that that next credit card statement comes around, you've already built back up in interest what you owe to them. So let's say you owe $10,000 and your minimum a month is $600. But by the time that that next month roll around, you think that you have a balance of $9,400? No, ma'am. It might be $10,200. We're running after the clock right now. And so anyways, I would really appreciate it if you guys comment down in the section down below. I really love hearing you guys' perspective as well as getting your insights. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do subscribe and share. That would really definitely help me out and really speed up the conversation. Just decide what do you want your end goal to be? Do you want to have a happy, fulfilled life with a spouse that loves you and have built a, fa a beautiful family, a legacy, something that you can be proud of? Are those the type of memories you want to look back on? Well, if so, then let's get to work. Anyways, I enjoyed having this conversation and I hope I speak with you guys again next time. Bye.